Hi, recently I saw a very cool pro program that was made using recursion. Actually, this program was made to show what recursion is. But as many other programs, this one was made for adults or programmers who already have some experience in it. Sometimes I think that these grown-ups are making the are trying to teach people with these programs in a way so no one understands them. Do they do it on purpose? When I started this channel, I promised you guys that everyone can program. So whenever I see a subject that is not explained well enough for kids, then I do this work for you. So, what is recursion? How does recursion work in programming? And of course, a cool project in Scratch about it. First of all, what is recursion? Recursion is the process of a procedure goes through when one of the steps of the procedure involves invoking the procedure itself. A procedure that goes through recursion is said to be rec recursive. What? I don't understand anything here. Told you, these people even write things so no one understands them. But no worries, we're going to do this clear and easy right now. Let's start from the real world. An example of recursion in the real world is when it's putting two mirrors side by side. For this, I even actually had to steal my mom's, my mom's mirrors for makeup. Whoa. Pretty cool, right? Well, this is an example of infinite recursion. Another good example of a recursion is the well-known Russian toy Matryoshka. It, um, so the, the way it has a recursion is because there's a big one, you open it, then there's a smaller one in it. You open the smaller one, there's another one. The smaller, you open the other one and there's another one and then it keeps going on but that's not an infinite recursion by the way a couple years ago we were making a family photos and uh and and i saw one and i uh, understood that that was kind of a recursion also do you uh, do you see me there okay so now you have at least a little thought about what a recursion is right but where do we use recursion and how does it help us solve problems? So let's say I'm a king from a fairy tale and I, and I say that whoever brings the biggest precious rock and gift of my princess daughter will get half of the kingdom. So, if not a lot of people enter this contest, then it's going to be pretty easy to see who's the winner, right? But what if thousands of people entered the contest and brought gems? As a smart but lazy king, I would order all these thousands of people to split in two groups and both of the groups see what which rock out of all of those is the biggest and those two groups bring their both of their biggest rocks to me and I and I'll just have two rocks to measure but those two groups got obviously did what I did and and split both of those groups into smaller groups and those groups also split into smaller ones and all the way like that again and again and again until it's really easy and all the groups are of only two people or even one. So the very hard job on finding out what thousand, which one is the biggest out of thousands, it just got easier for, for me. It's only measuring two of them. we just got really close to recursion in programming. A recursion in programming is a function that calls itself. Something like this. But as you can see, this is a pretty dangerous case for, for your computer because the loop is infinite. And it's gonna be doing it, doing it, and ne it's never gonna stop. So to avoid this infinite loop, we need this simplest case. 
with the case of the king and the j and the stones, uh, the easiest case will be will obviously be when there's only one left. When there's only one stone left, then you don't have to measure anything. The two main principles are one, the function calls itself, and two, the the stop the end case where the function stops, or also or also the simplest case or easiest case and other conditions like that. So now that you know about recursion in the real world, let's go to Scratch and make a program about it. We don't need any visual sprite now, but as we can't build any program without the sprite, let's just make it empty or clean. Now let's start a program from a very familiar structure when, when green flag clicked. As we... As we're gonna draw our snowflakes, we need to use this pen command section and erase all command. Now let's build our first non-recursive function that will be responsible for drawing snowflakes. For this function, we will need to set a couple variables. Snowflake size, let's, let's make them different sizes, which, which the variable will be ray size. Then, then to draw our snowflakes, we will need to set how many initial rays they will have, and the, and the variable will be rays. And depending on this value, we will be counting the direction of each ray Now let's build our snowflake ray by ray. Each snowflake has identical rays and to draw it, we are going to use recursive function. This function will take two arguments, angle and depth. Depth will be our simple case, or better to say, stop case. So if uh, so, it will be a condition when our function will stop calling itself. And here we will need to change a direction in what and what we're gonna draw to to draw our next ray for the snowflake. As the snowflake is a circle, we can easily count the 360 divided by how many rays. Now we need to move back our pen back to its initial position. So here, our function will call itself. But every time, we'll be increasing our depth to make, not make it infinite. So this recursive function draws snowflake rays. Done! Let's see. See how many, see, just with the help of recursion, we can get so many operations completed. Looking at this, pro looking at this program, you could, you could think that this almost works exactly as a regular loop. And you're going to be exactly right. Indeed, they're, they're very alike. But when, but when does it make sense to use a regular loop or a recursive function? It's up to you. 
First of all, you can use recursion only when you understand how it works. And also, you can use recur you, you should only use recursion when it's going to make your project more beautiful and it's going to take less code. That's it friends. So don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel and of course click cl click that small bell for notifications about new videos in my channel. And honestly, they're going to be really cool.